and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast, produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I'm Bob. I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. I'm joined by Chris, the pharmacist, smartest guy I know, or at least in the top five. I'll uh, give you that. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the truth about sleeping pills, Ambien, Lunesta, Sonata. We might even talk about another one. Are they dangerous? You know, so we're going to get into this. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone. And now these are called Z-drugs? Z-drugs, just primarily only because they have the name, the Z is. Yeah, the Z is the, is the other name they have. Yeah, like it's just a quick. Zolpidem. And yeah, Zolpidem, uh, Azopiclone, and, and Zalpon. So they all so, have Zs in it. Yep, so. that's why. Well, I unfortunately have some experience with this. Um, I was always a great sleeper, like the best sleeper ever. And I ran into some problem with sleeping and I didn't have any coping mechanisms. And I already was doing all the things which we recommend you try first, all the natural ways sure. to try to get to sleep. Yep. And I know one of the suggestions, the most important suggestion is that you go to sleep at the same time every night. Yeah. They talk about sleep hygiene. That's, you yeah. know, I mean, 70, 80% of sleep, you know, I mean, insomnia effects. I mean, let's talk about these numbers. I mean, you're talking about 50 to 70 million Americans at some point or regularly have difficulty sleeping. Sure. So those, I mean, that's a large amount of people yes, in our population. It and so and it affects your health greatly yeah top to bottom there are so many things that sleep is restorative so when a lot of people you know when you first either approach a pharmacy or if you talk to your doctor um you know 70 to 80 percent of those problems can be corrected with good sleep hygiene and and proper sure. so it's it's the, keeping the room cool, yeah cool room dark same time approximately yeah. every night easing into the evening relaxing right, activities right. Turning so your lights down as exactly you, right you know darkness it, it kind of yeah. it starts to bring those melatonin, melatonin levels, up, levels so, up so i mean that's really important for that but you know it, it we're a busy society as a whole and so as americans we are running and gunning pretty much from the moment we wake up you know you got the kids you're running around to schools working on a project working on a business project i mean we are just a busy society and so unfortunately insomnia can encroach on that and a lot of times sleep hygiene goes out the window i mean that's the first place to attack it so if you can ease into your night minimize caffeine minimize alcohol you know leading to your evening and like, caffeine it can stay in your system for quite a while so you really time. probably no caffeine after lunch yeah right? i mean well lunch or not much later than three or four in the afternoon there's some people with variance you know some people have sure, an incredible tolerance it. to caffeine so it kind of depends you have to, to we have to we have to tailor it to the patient sure. because it just kind of depends on their patterns and what they do but yeah, if you're having a cup of coffee Testing at 8 o'clock, probably not going to help with the sleep scenario. Um, and the same thing with alcohol is kind of interesting because there's, you know, if you just had a beer, you know, like, I'll take a beer before bed and I'll fall right to sleep. Well, there's a paradoxical excitation that it can occur with, you know, just even simply a beer, glass of wine, which you think is relaxing, but it's actually stimulating. And then it actually affects your REM sleep. And then all of a sudden, which is that rapid eye movement, and that's that portion of the sleep that's so important for us Restore. to reset our brains. Yeah. Um, and we miss out on a lot of that. So... Yeah, that sleep hygiene is critical and, and watching out for certain drugs that can impact sleep. So those are some of the non-drug things we can do before. And and you do want to see your doctor too, because if let's say the criteria is 30 days in a row where you're not sleeping well, that's kind of the medical criteria. I tend to be, I'm somewhat impatient. It's like, if you if you haven't slept in two weeks, yeah, that's you're probably affecting time. your immune system. You're definitely probably going to be affecting your work life, your social skills. I mean, because you can be short tempered. I mean, there's absolutely. a lot of things that absolutely affect you. And so we want to be super duper careful for that. And so, I mean, what if it's a thyroid issue that's not controlled? What if there's something going on with your adrenal glands? What if there's something else that's triggering these types of things? You know, as a pharmacist, there's no way on earth I could possibly know. And that's why we have to go to the go-to, which is your physician um, or your, your practitioner, where they can ask the certain questions and run the certain tests to make sure that there's maybe something else that's out there creating the problem that you just didn't even know. And you're kind of falling asleep, getting frustrated, beating your head against the wall because I can't sleep. And it is such a frustrating scenario for patients across the board it's well, awful it is, but you can't will it I no mean, and, no and the you more can you think, think about it the worse, the worse it, gets. it gets absolutely and, you know one of the problems that i have you know is when i which a lot of people have is if you go on vacation or if you go to uh i was going to a conference yep. and one time i had trouble sleeping because there was road noise sure and uh i didn't sleep all night and then i had to perform go to a conference yeah. i mean and so i i mean I want to make sure it's well known here that we are not advocates of drugs if we can. We try to uh, prescriptions. We try to 
the natural ways. That's the Bob and Brad way. Yep. But there's times where you, you may need to use them for a short period of time, yep. or maybe use them just like you said, when we go on vacation or go yep. on yeah, I mean, a conference. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the, 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 the whole invention of the Z drugs in general had, you know, was based off of benzodiazepines. And the benzos came into effect in the 50s, and we thought they were great drugs. And then over time, we realized that there was tolerance and addiction. So in came the 90s, and so the, the first uh, Z drug on the market was Ambien or Zolpidem. And so when, when I, early in my career, when, you know, 25 years ago, I, I mean, you could, I mean, you may as well put it in the water as far as the it, prescribing it habits that, at that, that time. It was so prevalent popper. because it worked great. Thanks, and really, sure. the distinct advantage of the Z drugs that they have over benzodiazepines and the false impression that they get, they are are safer, but there's a caveat to that. I mean, long-term, none of these, whether it's a benzo or if it's a Z drug, they're not designed for long-term use. But yet I've got patients that have been on it forever. And when you bring up, you know, to the, the patient, you know, there are newer studies that are suggesting it could be affecting your memory. Dementia, so, right? You know, so you... dementia. I mean, and some of those studies are conflicting too. So it's 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 sure. it's it's kind of tough. And you put it. And I actually uh, on the uh, a very interesting doctor that had talked about uh, a discussion that he had with a patient to try and get her off of uh, one of her sleeping medications. It was met with a lot of animosity. Yes. And it's tough because when we don't get our sleep, I mean, it's, it's kind of like you're taking away your yeah. best friend. Yeah. It's like, gosh, you can't take that away from me because if, how am I going to get rest? If I don't sleep well, the day's not going to go well. It sure. just isn't. I mean, yeah. and, and you can ruin vacations. Yeah, know, it can ruin performance. Let's say you yeah. have to be focused at work or just, I mean, even with your family, your friends, social yeah. interactions. I mean, you know, having proper sleep fixes a lot of other yes, ills. Yes, it does. I mean, it's restorative, it's healthful, it's your immune system. I mean, there's so many things out there that, you know, so it's critical to get that sleep, but it's such a hard challenge, you know, and that's why your doctor is so incredibly important in trying to find the right mix for you to keep you safe. And then, to, you know, the end goal of trying to get off of them. I mean, yep. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a temporary I mean, fix right now. And if you look at like you take Kaiser Permanente, uh, which is a West Coast uh, health system, which is about 12 million members strong, um, their optimum goal is to have anybody, whether it's a benzodiazepine or specifically the Z drugs, only two weeks of consistent use before we want them to either taper or discontinue going forward and then using intermittently for, you know, that occasional night where like, oh, I had a crazy day and I just can't unwind, you know, then it's very appropriate to use. And within the three drugs, whether it's Ambien, Lunesta, or Sonata, which, you know, again, would be the, the Zolpidem, the Azopiclone, or also the Zaplon, uh, in that order for the generic names, That's awesome. um, you know, we want to make sure, you know, the doctor's going to be very critical in, in just selecting which one's the right one for your particular situation. Because, you know, with the Ambien has an extended release formulation and Lunesta has a longer action. So we have to be careful. Even you want well, to give Ambien yourself. Ambien has both forms, right? It has it, the, the regular form, strength, but then it has a, it's, it's an interesting ER drug. One, yeah. It's pretty there. cool. Yeah. It works for four hours and then you get a burst four hours later that keeps you to sleep. So it's for people that actually can wake up. And I mean, that's the problem is when people use drugs, uh, we'll pick on Ambien right now. Um, Zolpidem, when it's used on a regular basis over and over again, actually loses its effectiveness. And that's what I found because I was on Ambien mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it worked fantastic. For, I mean, one half pill. Yes. So I take, took it and that wasn't the ER. No, one. but, but I mean, then, then it was to the point where it'll only work for three hours. Yep. Yeah, you develop a tolerance to all these medications relatively quickly. And, and the Sonata or the Zalplon is uh, actually one of the more interesting because it really only works for about an hour. It's designed for oh, people really? that just can't fall can't asleep. Get to sleep. And then actually within the dosing guidelines for the FDA and actually the manufacturer says if you wake up within four hours and you have at least four hours more you have to sleep, you can repeat that dose. Oh, you can. It's so short acting, but it's interesting that all these Z drugs can get these weird amnesia effects. Um, so when you take this drug, you want to go to bed right away. That right. is absolutely critical you yeah, don't want you to be can on feel the... it working i mean yeah. it, it, it you know i could not sleep and it it put me to sleep absolutely yeah. and you know the thing is is that it can put you into a hypnotic state and so basically where you can sleep eat you can sleep walk you can go man i want to go to the mcdonald's and get a shake kind of thing and all of a sudden you're sleep driving and you drove through somebody's yeah, front they yard called that uh ambient zombie or yep or 
Z drug zombies. Z drug zombies. I mean, you, there's a lot of different ways, but they. It's, so it's a powerful, powerful drug, and so you when you take it, you need to go to bed right away. I guess yeah. people were found binge eating, cleaning yep. their house, driving a car, oh. having sex. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, I mean, it, it, yep, lots of strange things. But yeah. all of a sudden, getting really weird things that show up from Amazon the next day, and you're like, oh my gosh, and you're like ten thousand dollar blender. I mean, it's and you, we can laugh about it, but it is kind of funny, but it's not because it's, you know, you cannot fight these drugs. They are very powerful. Well, when Roseanne Barr made that uh, racist remark, she blamed it on Ambien and the Ambien manufacturer. I just, I oh, they backtrack and they said, said, no, they said, racism is not a known no, side, side effect, effect of, of Ambien. <laughs> no, no. And in today's society, that's, you know, that's, that's, yeah, no, yeah, that, that's, excuse. and that's why she was fired and, and re- sure. rightfully so. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, I mean, social exceptions, I mean, that's, that's not there, but the drugs do have these very powerful effects. We have to respect them. We have to use them effectively. So it, it's very, very critical for the that. The thing I found out, Chris, is that, um, you know, as I started weaning off of it, uh, the fact that it was just there helped me. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I'm going to go to sleep, and if I can't get to sleep, it's, I can just take this. And that calmed me down and it stopped my mind from spinning. Yep, just knowing and, that it's there. I think yep. there's an aspect. I mean, there's a psychological aspect to it, and there's a physical aspect to it. And so of all these medications, again, like I said, that tolerance does develop. You know, and I think a lot of times when people fall into that, like, and when you, t- I mean, I had a conversation with one of my patients yesterday. I said, you know, you have, and, and, and she said, well, I've tried everything. I've done the counseling. And then, you know, so there's still millions and millions upon Americans that these are a very requisite and very appropriate. And, a portion of their lives. And yes, we want people to use it as minimally as possible, but sometimes there's just times where, you know, for whatever reason, brain chemistry, psychological chemistry, history, I mean, there's there's a lot of other things that are going on underneath the surface that the doctor needs to get to, and they work exclusively with the patient to ensure that we're getting the best possible care and try and keep them as safe as possible. But yeah, just have that psychological factor, though, just knowing you can go to that. Yes. And sometimes people are like, ah, I can go three days and kind of wing it, but yeah, on that fourth day, I'm going to have to take that medication. And sometimes that's enough, you know, yep. also we get you back in, we kind of get you reset and you're good to go. Uh, exercise, minimizing caffeine, sleep hygiene. We put it all together in a complete package, and then, hey, we got a better quality of life. Just a little bit on the side, but with the Ambien ER, obviously you can't cut that in half. No, no, yeah. you cannot split that because yeah. what will happen, you'll get a bolus dose. Um, your stomach acid is going to degrade that, and it's going to basically launch all that Ambien into your system. How would that be if you only took half of it? Well, you're just going to churn through it. I mean, you're going you're yeah. to take half the drug, but you're going to get all the drug that's in that half oh, tablet yeah, that's going to sure. just elute out into your system. Sure. So it, it, you're not going to get that. Because if you look, it's a compression matrix tablet. It's actually kind of interesting. The, the manufacturer is quite genius when they did this. Um, and then basically they just found a way to get it around your stomach acid, get it into your gut. And then, so it's got two parts. You have your immediate release and then four hours later, boom, it's absorbing again, but it's absorbing in the intestines rather than, in, you know, so, well, they actually all absorb in the intestines, but the first round passes the stomach acid that helps to get it going, gets in the intestines, absorbs into your system, and it makes you tired, and it works within 20 minutes. So I, I had tried the Lunesta, too, mm-hmm. um, and that seemed to keep me asleep longer. Yep, and it does. It does. I mean, that was eight hours. Yeah, and you have to give yourself, yeah, you especially sure that you counseling that point time. for pharmacists is, you, you know, you want eight hours, and I, I even realistically, probably about 10 hours out of your system because if you're driving and all of a sudden you get in a car accident and you know, I took my Lunesta last night, well, you know, that's you're, operating while intoxicated. So yeah. that is a risk. And so it's something that, you know, we have to be careful with that. And as we age, that's another big risk because unfortunately, as we age, our metabolism slow down, drug stays in the system higher and longer. So it's and really also as you age, uh, sleep becomes more difficult for a lot of people. It does for a lot of different reasons. And we talk about our sleep cycles, you know, it's, it's very important as we age. I mean, like a newborn uh, in particular, I mean, they sleep. 16 sure. hours a day, maybe not, you know, five, if you have a new parent, five minutes at a time. Um, but you know, and then as, as a teenager, I could sleep 12 hours. Oh yeah. So. Well, yeah. But you had a lot of growth changes yeah. going on that yeah, changed yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I think we all could. And you know, but it's, it's interesting. Um, sleep cycles themselves, by the time a, a child is five years old, it mimics an adult's. Um, it's just a longer period of time in the four phases of sleep. So it's kind of interesting when you look at it from that response. Um, But, you know, more importantly, with respect to these medications, and you use the example of Ambien ER and also your Lunesta, um, you want to make sure that you've got that eight-hour gap minimum 
before you consider thinking about things that require like work or business or, sure. uh, or, or driving, or, you know, if you're going to do a workout, I mean, you could, it could actually affect your coordination. So we were going to mention this too, Chris, we were going to talk about, I, I actually had a fall. Um, uh, and what had happened one, I didn't have lights on in the room, <laughs> so that, uh, but I got up and I'm in the middle of the night and I was on Ambien and I was trying to get to the bathroom and I'm like, I yeah. mean, I was tired. And oh I yeah. Was, well, no, it, it absolutely messes with you. I mean, and from a coordination standpoint, and again, as we age, that's why the importance of these things is we have to be exceedingly careful with the prescribing of them. And, and it can, you're a very coordinated person yeah. and, and it took you for a loop. I mean, as we yeah. age or maybe some of our muscles aren't firing the way we wanted to, let's say we're 75 years old. Um, you take that fall, you hit your head on a counter, yeah. you, you, I mean, you can break a hip. I you mean, could, there's, you can kill yourself. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's it that a, serious a downward slide after that. So, yep. and so that's why we have to be cautious with that. I mean, you know, and as we age again, we kind of touched on it. We don't need as much sleep as we age, but that's not to say that you, you still need sleep. Right. So it, it's very, very critical. I mean, it's funny when you look at different species, I mean, like a giraffe only sleeps 30 minutes a day which I thought was really kind of interesting. So well, it's funny. But five minutes at a time. Humans are the only ones that are uh, not falling to sleep cycle of sunlight. You know what I mean? Because we, we can artificially create light and so we can work longer yeah. hours and, Yep, exactly. A bad thing for humans, actually. Yeah, and you know, our shift work makes shift it very work, challenging. Terrible. People that travel yeah. for a living, like you said, you had trouble yeah. in hotels. So, I mean, there's a lot of appropriate uses for these Z drugs, but you know, again, you want to use it with a, a level of caution yeah, what, for sure. Now, what would you recommend as far as length of time? Well, the guidelines that are kind of being placed in uh, now, currently, they really say two weeks of consecutive use and then to taper and or try and find another mechanism, you know, and you want to, even when you're using the Z drugs, you still, sleep hygiene has got to be a mainstay yes, of everything yes. that we do. I mean, it's it's getting actually adequate sunlight during the day if we yeah. can, which, you know, if we work in a nine to five position, you know, we're in the Northern Hemisphere, for us here, sun's gone tough, by the time you get out of work. Yeah. So it doesn't always work to our advantage. So maybe, uh, but, but if we can, you know, we'd like to get some outdoor activity if it's all possible even though it's cold um, because daylight is important. So hopefully there's a window or something that we can at least get some of that. But the reality of it is, is that you still want to fall into that sleep hygiene pattern. And so, and but I try can, and use it. I, I want to warn against in you. I'm, you're, I'm sure you'll back me up on this hundred percent. Are you taking melatonin? And if you keep taking it, your body stops manufacturing it. Am I correct? Yep. Yeah. The, some of the studies suggest that if we repeatedly take the over the counter supplement melatonin, that it can actually shut down our natural system. Yeah. And, you know, so basically when it gets dark out, melatonin goes up, makes us tired. When it's light out, drops, we wake up. I mean, that's, that's our circadian rhythm. So it's critical for our functioning. And, you know, we have so many people now that work third shifts. I mean, there's physicians, there's nurses, yeah. there's manufacturers, there, there's just people that are night owls. But, uh, you know, it's still so critical for us to make sure we get that adequate amount of sleep. And so when we use these drugs longer than that, I mean, the studies actually show that if beyond two weeks, you actually revert back to the same sleep patterns you had pre-drug. So you really want to use it for a short period of time, get your body caught up so that you're functioning cognitively and, and, f and feeling well, because sleep also affects our immune systems, the way we feel, oh, our everything. behavioral. I mean, it's, it's everything. Yeah. So once we can get reset, we want to try and rely on our own natural methods to try and sleep. And then for the occasional use or difficulty sleeping, it's there yeah. for you. But there, again, there's some people, I mean, you've got PTSD, you've got, I mean, there's a lot of other things out there and there's a multitude of other medications that doctors will certainly try and or encourage, but sometimes it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. And I mean, you might be uh, someone that's having difficulty with pain and yep. having trouble sleeping because of that. I mean, there's this. There are a multitude of reasons why doctors have people on these things long term. Sure. So the guidelines are one thing, but, you know, each situation is individual. So, I mean, we've got, what, 340 million Americans. So there's, you know, we'll call 70 million Americans that have each individual different sleep issues on a given day. And so we have to treat them each as individuals and what's best, you know, what works well for Bob may not work well for Chris, may not work well for Liz, may not work well for Mike. So, I mean, it just kind of depends on the person and, and what we can do to try and keep ourselves going forward in the most healthy way possible. Well, I'm really happy that I'm, I'm completely off it now. And, um, and you only get by on what, four hours of sleep a night? Or I've, you are a, I've an got problems. Here. But <laughs> so, so. All right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, listening and watching. And uh, check us out on uh, all our channels. Thanks, everyone. Yep.